gallery whenever i am in doubt now i think i am just gonna grab a 90s superman comic to review i didn't like not enjoying comics that van morrison one it proper pissed us off and i'm sitting on two spider-man comics that i cannot even begin to articulate my hatred for so here is some great Superman from 1997. This is Adventurings of Superman 545. It is continuing on the Our Superman Electric story. This is the next part and as you can see from the cover, Superman's new powers are flaring up in a big way. This is written by Callum Cazazo. Uh, probably my favourite of the 90s Superman writers. Uh, also worth pointing out, according to Stan Jurgensen, the idea of altering Superman's powers, that was an idea that Callum Kazazel had been kicking around the Superman office for a while. They finally decided it was worth exploring since it presented a lot of new story potential and it gave Superman a fresh set of challenges. Here is Superman and Lois being steamy. I tell you what, the 90s, they get a lot of flack and criticism but nobody ever points out how healthy the majority of superheroes' sex lives were. And when Superman, when he gets horny, his electricity powers start manifesting. This won't be the setup for the rest of the story. He doesn't have to get turned on to use them. He also ends up falling through the wall because he gains intangible. And then when he is fallen, he cannot fly away. And he hits the ground in a big electric explosion. So here we can with a splash page, electric Superman. We're quickly getting into establishing Superman's change of powers. The last issue was teasing them, almost drip feeding them, but we're full on here. We have quite a long scene with Superman struggling to adapt to these sudden confusing changes and not being able to control them. He causes a car to blow up. Didn't worry though, it was empty. Then he's going to get hit by a bus, but he phases through it. And he ends up falling through the ground into the sewers. And then he hits the power cables, which causes a massive blackout in all of the metro centre. This blackout causes all sorts of bedlam. But our at the prison... The power cut has allowed Blazing Skull to escape from confinement. He's going to be our baddie for this one. Blazing Skull, I don't know much about him. He is a Superman baddie, but I think this is the only story with him in that I have read. He is probably in the background of some other ones that I've got. But this is the only time I remember him as being a focus or whatever. He is the sort of villain that Jeff Noble's will have trotted out really half-heartedly in Batman and Superman. So here we have Superman and he is trying to control his form. He's trying to make himself solid again. We show this with him trying to climb up some ladders but his hand just phases through them. And he has to really focus to make himself solid again so he can climb. I mean it takes a lot of effort for him. Look, it takes him an old blooming page just to climb up some ladders. Then there is some gangsters and also an advert for this storyline. That is what Superman is going to look like in three or four issues time. But yeah, we have these gangsters and I didn't really like this. It feels too much like a Batman story in a Superman comic. I've no problem with Superman fighting against gangsters. But I don't feel we really need to see the inner workings of their organisation. The woman there, at least she's kind of pretty. And she also has fire powers, so that makes her a bit more interesting. More interesting than the rest of these 30s throwbacks anyway. But four pages spending time on gangsters in a Superman book just feels like a weird tangent. So Blazing Skull... 
he is on the loose and Blazing Skull is insane. He thinks that he is a famous hero from an Arden Day film, like the black and white ones. And he thinks that Lewis is his on-screen lover. Let's just ignore how Blazing Skull escaped from prison and then just showed up in the Metro Centre right where Lewis was. So now we get to see Electric Superman, him fighting Blazing Skull. This doesn't go well for Superman because he doesn't have much control or even awareness of his new powers. In fact, there's this kind of confusing bit where Superman... I think what's meant to have happened is Superman, he was trying to charge at Blazing Skull and grab hold of him and fly away with him. But that didn't happen. I think he went intangible and he just flew away without him. If I'm wrong about that, and I'm never wrong about anything in comics ever, but if I'm wrong about what is meant to be happening here, can you say so down below? Can you tell us what this is meant to be? It's not entirely clear, but the end result is that Superman, he has wound up leaving the battlefield and leaving Blazing Skull behind with Lewis and his boss from the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson. We have a lovely bit of character stuff here with J. Jonah Jameson. He is standing up the Blazing Skull and protecting Lewis from him. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson, he had cancer at this point. So he felt like he didn't have much to live for. But then Superman, he shows back up and he's full on Super Saigon, Electric Superman here. So now we have Electric Superman fighting Blazing Skull for real this time. And this is fun. Superman is trying to pretend that he knows what's going on and that he is confident. Even though he has no idea whatsoever what is happening with his powers. And then there is another explosion. And again, Superman seems to have misjudged the situation. And his energy form is expended. And he disappears, leaving Blazing Skull standing victorious. Let us our ear and they're all about Superman getting married to Lewis. That was another recent change that I made in a character. And virtually all the letters here, all two pages of them, they all think that the marriage is a good idea. It's a shame that nobody showed this to Dan Diddy Dido before he got fired. This issue is fun and clearly an important part of the Electric Superman story. They're going straight in now. No pottering about. We have got Electric Superman. We have got his new powers. I really love 90s Superman. It was great. Should I just become exclusively a 90s Superman channel? Like, if that was the case, I'm unlikely to ever have to read any pretentious books or any annoying agenda comics. Life would just be much better if I only ever read 90s Superman. I rate this seven thumbs up. 